So um, um, it's been a month since I kind of been doing these slow videos, and I gotta say, uh, it's it's probably my favorite part of my channel, right? Um, obviously, I've done some different things now. Financially, it's been great. Statistically, analytically, from YouTube standpoint, it's not been good. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I'm glad I'm able to do what I want to do now and kind of just take control of my own channel and kind of just grow the way I want to grow. Um, for, for me, uh, for a lot of y'all, man, y'all know I love slow music. I've loved slow music for a while. By the way, I got a new mic. You know, I've been that. I just got off waiting for a friend to scoop me up. You know, I, I always got to sing that shit. Ooh, it's hella cold. Um. I just got back from L.A. Oh, yes, I plan to move <laughs> hey man new mic got me acting crazy man but uh, I, I definitely stepped up man if y'all haven't noticed i um it's still on usb i'm getting the xlr soon um i gotta say though man back back on topic you know i got adhd and shit back to topic man uh slow music for me has become something that i just genuinely love i've listened to it since i was 13 i've damn near listened to it for two decades and so now I've been doing this now series for a month now. It never drops on Sunday, but it's called Slow Sundays. And it's where we listen to slow music. And I've done Uzi. I've done Gunna. I've done Travis Scott. You know, I've just to name a few. And I'm going to continue to keep doing this because there's a lot of slow music and a lot of people that do it, such as the Strellises, the Goblin Jays, the Zeros, the Chovies, the Rum Worlds, you know, the Slaters. Shout out to Slater. So I always show love, man, to the slow community because I feel like TikTok has taken a little too much credit for it and they don't deserve that. Especially shout out to Houston, Texas, too, for just chopped and screwed being the grandfather of what it is. Um, but today, man, we're going to listen to The weekend, The Morning Slow. Now, a lot of y'all don't know, man, I, um, the reason I love music so much is because the way I listen to music is I listen to a lot of production. I listen to a lot of sounds and I tie a lot of my memories to music, right? Music for me is more about an experience. I know a lot of you guys love lyrical shit. I'm not, ta I'm not saying how you guys listen to music is the wrong way. We all have our own ways to kind of just interpret music, right? Um, but I listen to vibes, man. I always have memories. So every time I listen to these slow songs, I always got a memory tied to it that kind of just hits me really well. And um, the, the morning, man, I was 21, 22, I believe, uh, when, when this actually came out. And I got to say, man, this is one of my favorite tracks, at least. Because I, I'll tell you exactly. Hold on, let's 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 do it for a little bit. Just that guitar at the beginning, man. Whether it's slowed or fast, bro. I don't know what it is about that shit, but that guitar keys be the way the motherfuckers be hitting. Just you know, I can't be doing the instruments like that. I don't know why my speaker got that close, but um, you know, like the way you be doing the instruments like that. I felt like that right there was one of the like key moments of why i fucked with the morning right listen listen from the morning to the evening complaints for the tennis like a six months pregnant <laughs> man the way the weekend kind of just slid in there he kind of came in bro like you got to understand, man, at that point, I believe, don't quote me on this, the out, the mixtape released in April or March. It might have been er, late February. Don't, 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 don't quote me on that. I'm just saying around that time. This is 2011. Yeah, I was about to say 2001. I was 11 years old, but 2011. Because I remember the reason why this song hits me so hard, because the first time I listened to it was the summer. We went to University of Florida. We went uh, 2011. I believe that's the year. Um... Did they go back to back that year with Tebow and 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 uh, Joakim Noah in 2009? Actually, I might be thinking about another time. Anyways, so we went in, in 2011, the summer. I'll never forget. We started listening to this. I'm high as shit, right? And then this motherfucker come on, and I didn't actually like the album like that truly until I listened to it slow, because I I didn't have a I didn't have a respect for the weekend yet because I didn't know what type of artist he was and I didn't know that I loved some of that kind of like indie dark shit. I felt like this track was really personal too as you keep listening to it. Kelly is the mission. Ah, and it's so 
crazy, man. This track is so powerful now because if you listen to Snowfall on After Hours, he de now Cali is not the mission anymore. They're trying to get out of Cali. They're trying to leave that shit. And they're, you know, like, because they understand that it is that shit escape from L.A. You know, that shit is poison. I honestly feel like, man, when you make it, it's a different mindset. But again, this, this track right here. So the beat hasn't dropped yet, right? We, the beat hasn't dropped yet. We're all sitting in the car. You know, like I said, everybody, when you're in your car, you can still zone out with your friends. But everybody has their own world. There's four windows in the car. You look out the window. 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 Every every window can be a different universe. It can literally be a different universe on how you decide and how you look at it. So whenever I see it like that, man, I'm just looking like, yo, I'm in my own own universe as long as everybody shuts the fuck up we can all have our own vibe the beat hasn't dropped yet though and then as the beat drops bro it gets so crazy because this motherfucker comes in so hard pause he comes in so motherfucking hard <laughs> Bro, I, bro, the first time, so I'm high, right? I, this is like my first time kind of getting high. You know, I'm 21. I'm blaze tra blaze a trail. You know, I, I become a, re a reefer head, a, a smoker head. This is the same time about Wiz is doing his thing. Believe Taylor Alder Dice came out maybe 2012 or maybe that was something before. Maybe it was, uh, I think, um... Cushion Orange Juice actually might have been out at that time uh, uh, when I was still coming to Chief Rocker. So, anyways, I'm literally smoking, and then that shit comes on, and I'm literally sitting here just confused because that bitch, pew, 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 pew. and as you high, I don't care, whatever drugs you are on, whatever drugs you are on, it is going to hit you in some type of way. I don't know. Drugs, you on the psychedelics, you on the alcohol. I always say this every video, but I got to repeat it. Whatever you feeling like, you literally just kind of sit there, and you just like... I I feel it like damn like and you and, and my eyes literally just open up my, bro my, my the whole time I'm sitting there like this <laughs> And I'm fucking going, I'm spazzing out, bro, because now at this moment, I got goosebumps, bro. All my homies, we in the car, bro. Like I said, you in your own world, you could do it. Uh, look, I'm looking at my, I'm in the back left passenger seat looking out the window like, this shit is game changer. Obviously, I'm not saying nothing out loud, but I'm, because everybody got to shut the fuck up, remember? But I'm just sitting back there like, <laughs> like, this is some out of body experience now. Out of body. <laughs> That's just how I feel. Oh, no. and, and, and again, this is the subtle track on the album because this is some different shit on the album. Remember, the album was very hardcore or also very sad, but I feel like this was the mellowest track on the, the mixtape, right? Whenever you get other tracks like, you know, like Wicked Games, you know, Coming Down, other tracks, you know, Toxic Shit, you know, when you get to tr this track right here. This is when it kind of tranquils out, but he was still talking on his talk to shit. And you got to understand, this is, this is Abel at his purest, right? I would say at his pure, because at his, at his, at the peak, right? Because now he's humble and he's about to make it. He doesn't know he's about to make it yet, but he's making it. His mixtape is going crazy on Dat Piff. That's what we use back in the day. We use Dat Piff. I don't know why I talk so close to the mic. I'm sorry. I'm just, it's just a habit right now. But yeah, you be like, he, he be talking so just... It's just, it feels so genuine, right? Because it's pure. And I think that that's kind of what I was feeling. Man, I'm going to tell y'all about my fucking story after I do this, right? But we're going to get to the part. We don't know the fucking story yet. Ah. Uh, yeah. Yeah. All that money, the money is the motive in work. Girl, girl, put in work. Girl, put in work. Man, I think honestly, then that guitar, man, that way that guitar is hitting, bro, it just gives the track. As much as I love everything else about the track, if there was no guitar in this track, man, the shit would be buns, bro. Like, hold on, let me press this button real quick. Bet. All right. If there, if there is literally no guitar, like if there was no guitar in this shit, then I honestly feel like this track would just be bland. But the fact that that solo comes out at the end as well, too, a lot of people don't realize, man, as soon as we get to that solo at the end, bro, it's it's over. And I'm going to tell you a story about that when we get there. But you feel it in the morning. 
seeing in the morning. Definitely had a lot of those when I was 21, 22, because this song played through my 21s, 22, 23. Like I said, 2011, I just hit 21, um, and then my Jordan year as well. We, you know, we played this. Also, Thursday came out a year later as well. So, I mean, you know, we had all this in rotation. But I feel like, man, you get girls like that. She the type of girl you'll never see her in the morning. You like you you gonna you gonna have them girls that you just you gonna have you gonna have them girls where you just kind of don't see them in the morning. Like they just gonna gonna be gonna be gone, and it's gonna be one of them one nights. And I always tell you, man, it's always sad because the one nights are usually the best nights. <laughs> the best nights. <laughs> So yeah, man, I had this one chick, right? <laughs> Let me get my seductive bag. <laughs> I had this one chick, and um, yeah, man, we were kind of just listening to the song, and um, you know, one thing led to another. It was kind of we were all fucked up, and she like pulled me to the room. So we go into the room. I was always a music type of dude, right? Like I always been. I, I'm talking. About, I'm listening to Trey songs, The Dream. You know, 20, 2009, 2010. We talking about Ready Days. You know, um. Shit, neighbors know my name type shit. The dream, obviously, love your girl. That was my time back in 20, 2000, uh, 2009, 2010. But, you know, we throw this weekend on, man. This, this is some different shit, right? Like, I'm I'm definitely, like, not used to what I'm hearing. And so the girl, she put me to the side. We in the room. I'm like, all right, I'm going to play some music. So I played that shit. You know, she started going at it. Ayaka, ayaka. You know, she going in that thing. I'm like, cool, that's crazy. So I'm sitting there. And then all I remember, like, you know, I'm doing a whole foreplay because I always tell, man, foreplay is important, bro. I, like, sometimes, you know, it's about fucking, yeah, like, you smashing, but you definitely got to have some foreplay, bro. That's for the grown people out there, man. If you don't know yet, yeah, man, that's definitely something you got to get in your bag. If you expect to be any type, to have any type of game or to have any type of comebacks. Like, when I say comeback, I mean, they're going to call you back or you're just going to be a one and done. Because I'll tell you right now, bro, if you ain't got no foreplay, bro, for the most part, I mean it's probably gonna be suck you ain't probably gonna get no gushy gushy in that thing so bro next thing you know the part coming at the end so you know i'm just foreplaying around it because i'm nervous too you know what i'm saying i didn't turn into a bad dude till i was like 19 19 20 like that's when i the prime but i'm saying now i'm 21 it's it's, it's happened I'm, I'm i'm fucked up and like we chilling and our man next thing you know all i remember was like that part came at the end which is right here so i'm the so all i re, yeah. So all I remember on that part, you know, her head fling back, bro. It's kind of like the lights. Like I said, I always have for some reason. I always like the little light too, because I feel like light play is crazy. When I say light play, I mean the um, you know, the blinds are kind of open. The light was beaming in, you know, so the, the the light hitting on the side of her face, and all I just remember was kissing on her. You know, I'm kissing, I'm going in, and she on top, and I'm just down, blaka, you know, blaka. But I'm just looking up, and she looking back, and it's crazy because. When you when you when this moment happens, this moment is always now forever cemented in me because the weekend is playing. And now this moment is always going to be in my head. Yeah, it, it was, you know, what I'm saying we we after a couple times we did it again and it fell off. But I, that memory will forever, ever be, you know, branded into my head because as I'm looking up, I'm saying she got some nice little thing, you know what I'm saying? Little, little you know, she little light skinned thing. And she looking back like this. So my head like right here. I'm kissing down like this. Her head like that. So then that shit playing is just. And then I, I'll just never forget how good she looked. At that very moment. As much as we not cool now. It's fine. Life happens. I'll never forget how she looked. Where her head tilted back. And this song playing. That's how she was. I love you, Devin Dorsey. <laughs> oh, man. Oh, man. <laughs> Damn, boy. Damn. Crazy, right? That's crazy how, like, it's crazy how music is so powerful, man. Like music can take you into, it just could take you into another world, and people don't really understand that, man. Like for for me, man, that, like I said, that is again, you never realize you're in a moment until 
you never realize you're in a moment while you're in a moment, right? I always say that a lot. Somebody said Andy Bernard from The Office said that. That's crazy. I didn't even realize that. Um, but you, ne you never realize that. Like, you could be in a moment right now. You ever look around and you just kind of just like, you're looking around you're like, damn, like, I fuck with all y'all. But then you realize that maybe in five years, bro, all 10 of y'all ain't going to be friends or all 10 of y'all ain't going to be together or you never going to be with this girl. But at the time you knew that you loved her or you knew that you was feeling some type of way, even if you was on the Hennessy or whatever, you knew that your heart was beating fast. You couldn't wait to just hold her hand or you just wanted to just get behind her and smile like shit like that. People never realize they in a moment until that moment. And then you have it later on in life where you kind of look back like that was a moment. And I always say, man, music plays a vital role in a lot of moments, <laughs> shit, in many moments, 99 percent of moments. Right. Because. There's always some kind of music played in the background. There's always something kind of playing like previously to get to that moment. It's always like music. If I, could you imagine a world with no music? Right. And imagine a bit slow. So that bitch was slow, too. Yeah, I turned this bitch on the slow shit. Um, I was going crazy to that shit, man. I ain't gonna lie. Like, and I, I felt like that was kind of the best shit. Like, none of that fast shit, but I felt like I had a connection with, you know, like, I, I'm the type of person, like, I can lie. Like, not lie, but like, I, I maybe they say there's a Sagittarius name, but I kind of be tricking myself to be thinking I'm in love because I feel like it just, like, enhances everything. You know, you, when you put some feelings into feelings is always better than just some random shit, like I say. And when you become, when you become well equipped to, add feelings to a random event and not get caught up that's when it becomes dangerous that's because you become that drizzy hey sleeping alone type shit kind of feeling the void anyways man there's a moment another moment too i always had this too I, I um i said it in my um house of balloons throwback video if you haven't have watched that we'll let it run again though but i always say like imagine you driving sun coming down florida weather florida weather right because i gotta be florida weather cali weather as well top down driving wind blowing and you cruising man not a care in the world because you at peace you feel me and everything is just good it's like that bob marley feel good shit you feel me and all you can do is smile that's all you can do is just smile Yeah. Life is good. Life is good. I feel like, man, for like, yeah, so when you have moments like that, man, it's kind of crazy. So the weekend in the morning, man, is always going to have a special place in my heart because I feel like it was kind of just the first time um, where I really like, I guess not, I guess you could say made love. I wouldn't say I made love, but first time I was kind of just like, just in a, in a trance, like that music actually put me in a trance, like, and you know, I definitely have another story like that, a similar to that story that you guys have heard with Frank Ocean uh, Pyramids Part Two, um, the second part of Pyramids that that has happened, L.A. Chick. Um, but yeah, that was kind of the first time that actually really happened in my life, and I was like, damn. And I'll never forget how beautiful she looked, cause she, the way the music was kind of hitting her, and her long hair was just back, and it was curly, and her light skin ass, and she was looking back, and the light was just beaming on her face. Oh man. She was killing it, Shawty. Shawty was killing it. Shawty was killing it, bro. She was just into the music as much as I was, shit. So, yeah, man. I always thank The weekend for that, man. It was a great time, man. That was definitely a great time in my life, man. So, that being said, man, get in the comments below, man. Let me know what y'all think. Let me know what y'all favorite part of the song. Let me know how y'all feel about The Morning. Let me know how y'all feel about House of Balloons in general. I don't call it Trilogy, man. I call it House of Balloons. I call it Thursday. I call it Echoes of Silence. That's what I was grown up to um that's that's my age i guess you could say um but yeah let me know what's your favorite track on that um again man get a video three thousand likes man we get new vinyl on the wall also man three thousand likes we'll get two slow videos out next week for the next week's uh next week's on sunday or monday whatever but um yeah man just like that man i, I love this series man as you can tell man music is a big imp impact for me i love music that's always going to be a thing one thing i'll never do is fake it i'm always going to always have a connection with music i'm gonna say how i feel i'm gonna do things how i want to do it that's how I was raised. That's how I am. So that being said, man, get in the comments below. Let me know what you think. Don't forget, follow me social media what you hear. And until the next time, it's me, boy, Dev. We out. Peace.